If you've been a subscriber of this channel for a while, you've probably seen a few videos on radios from Redivis Islands that we've done, and while they've had some solid features, one issue that always stood out is that the spurious emissions didn't meet FCC standards for ham radio use, and I ended up not recommending those radios due to that. So when Redivis reached out to me to review another radio, I was a bit hesitant due to this, but since I can't pass up the opportunity to test an IP67 radio, we decided to give them another chance with their new dual band ham radio, the HA1 UV, and had them send one over. Will it pass the spurious emissions and waterproof test? Stay tuned as we get into this and more. We're approaching a restricted area. Restricted area is one mile west. Before we get into the radio, a quick note on spurious emissions, what they are, and why you should care about them. Spurious emissions are unwanted signals transmitted on additional frequencies other than the one you intend to transmit on. If we look at this example from when I tested the iLUNTS HD2, all of those spikes on the screen are the additional frequencies it's transmitting on. Now, the FCC has standards in place that say that these additional transmissions need to stay below a certain level. What the FCC is concerned about are radios interfering with other radio services, especially emergency, aviation, and public safety frequencies. Now, whenever I bring up spurious emissions on this channel, there will inevitably be someone in the comments who say they don't care. They're typically the ones who don't want to get a license and don't want to follow any sort of rules. But the funny thing is, they are probably the ones who should care the most. This is because historically, the FCC doesn't seem to go after unlicensed users on ham radio, especially if they're not causing interference. What the FCC does care more about is when the high-paying commercial users or public safety users are receiving interference, and the FCC will work to track them down. Now, while not a ham radio, one such example is where the FCC used a direction finding to track down a transmitter at a Topgolf location in Glendale, Arizona. This turned out to be a wireless microphone and receiver system that they were using that in addition to transmitting a signal in its intended range somewhere within 506 and 542 megahertz, it was also transmitting a signal on 803.920 megahertz and that is the frequency of the City of Buckeye's public safety communication system. In addition to that, another reason to care is wasted energy. If you purchased a 5-watt radio that's transmitting on additional frequencies, the power that's being transmitted on those have to come from somewhere. So that power is being taken away from your available 5 watts. So your 5-watt radio isn't quite a 5-watt radio anymore when this happens. There's of course more reasons that we won't get into in this video as this is meant to be a video on the HA1UV, but just wanted to touch on those key points. So what about the HA1UV? I am happy to report that this radio does not have this issue. It meets the emission specs and shows up clean on the spectrum analyzer. Out of the box, the transmit on the HA1 UV is locked to the ham bands only. Now this radio is unlockable and this is simply done by pressing the PTT and 8 button while powering it on. Doing this will unlock the radio and extends the transmit range to 136 to 174 megahertz on the VHF side and 400 to 480 megahertz on the UHF side giving it the ability to transmit on GMRS and MURS frequencies. The HA1UV is advertised as being IP67 waterproof, meaning it should survive being submerged up to a meter deep for 30 minutes. Now we got a lot of rain recently, so the water at my usual testing spot was a bit too rough to test with but I was able to test in a nearby creek and small waterfall, and the radio came out working perfectly. No water intrusion, no issues. I even threw it in the mud for fun, and no issues there either. Now while this radio is rugged and waterproof like my daily driver, the VRN76, or the version of that radio from VTech called the UV Pro, this is just a standard ham radio, so it doesn't have the packet radio and Bluetooth TNC features that 
those radios have. This is, however, a great alternative to the cheap Baofengs that'll get you a rugged and waterproof radio for not that much more money. So if you're looking for a radio that's rugged, waterproof, and clean on the airwaves, the HA1 UV is a great choice that comes in the sub $100 range, and it's currently $69.99 on Amazon. Now these prices are likely to change soon, so if you want to pick one up, we'll have affiliate links to it in the video description below where you can check it out. That'll do it for this video though on the new HA1 UV, and I hope you found it useful. If you did, please be sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already so you won't miss out on any of our future videos. Thank you all and have a good one.